Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about writing an UPF for a given power intent in a design. So UPF is an acronym for Unified Power Format, which is an IEEE standard for specifying the power intent. Before starting, I would suggest you to go through my blog mentioned in the description of this video, where you can find details of the UPF command syntax that we will be using throughout this video, and also other information that will help you have a better grasp on the concept. First, let us look into the logical hierarchy and the power intent of the design. So we have a top level wrapper built on top of Aon wrapper and PGD wrapper. This PGD wrapper has some logic and two registers. I have not shown the inputs and outputs of this uh, to this register for simplicity purpose and to keep the diagram simple. Uh, similarly, the Aon wrapper has some logic, a power management unit or PMU that is supposed to drive the power related control signals as you will be seeing later. Also, this wrapper has one more wrapper below its hierarchy called the Aon PGD wrapper, which again has some logic inside it. As you can see, there are signals coming to and fro in different logics. Now let us look into the requirement. So there are three power domain out of which two can be power gated and one is always on. This third point is a tricky concept, which we need to understand while implementing the isolation strategy. We'll be discussing about it when we talk about isolation. So we need to create three different power domain and of course one more for the top. Similarly, there are two voltage domains of 0.9 volt and 1.1 volt. So we need to create two different voltage domains and one more voltage domain for the ground. Okay, I know the font size is very small, but I wanted to capture everything in one slide. So I had no other option. However, you can check my blog for the complete diagram. All right, now let us create the power domains. This create power domain is a very simple UPF command where we need to mention a user defined domain name and the elements of the domain. However, while defining the top power domain, we don't have to use the element. Instead, we use this include scope. So we have created one top, uh, top power domain and three other power domains named PD Aon, PD gated Aon and PD gated. You can see how inside the elements we have specified the logical hierarchy of the corresponding power domains as per the requirement mentioned in the first page. Now let us create the supply ports. As we have two voltages, we have to create two supply ports, VCCL for 0.9 volt and VCCH for 1.1 volt and of course one more for the ground supply. As shown, we use create supply port for port creation. Then we have to create the supply nets for each power domain using create supply net command. At top level, we need to create supply nets for all the supply, but in other power domain, we need to create as per our requirement. As you remember, PD Aon is supplied by 0.9 volt. Thus, we create a net for 0.9 volt and ground. Similarly, we have created nets in other two power domain. But as you can see, we have created three nets for PD gated Aon and PD gated domain. As these are power gated domain, Thus, one is always on supply net, another is the gated supply net, and the third one is for the ground. Also note how we are using the reuse for supply nets which are common, so that we don't create an extra net for it. And finally, we connect the nets created to the ports created. Then we define which supply net is the primary power supply net and primary ground supply net for all the domains. You can see how in gated domains, we have used the gated supply net as the primary supply net. Now you must be wondering why we defined a always on supply net in the gated domain in the previous slide. Well, it is done to act as the input to the shutdown logic in the power gated domain as it is shown here. So for each gated domain, we create a power switch and the output of the switch act as the primary supply net to the gated domains. The switch is normally controlled by a power management unit which sits in the Aon domain and each, uh, each power gated uh, domain has a different control. So this is the control for the PD gated domain whereas this is the control for the PD gated Aon domain. Since signals are crossing different power domains, we need to implement isolation strategy. The signals coming from the gated domain to the Aon domain becomes X or unknown when the power to the gated domain are cut off. 
Thus, we need to clamp all these input signals to the Aon domain coming from the power gated domain. Therefore, we have clamped the signal SIG2 and SIG5 to a value. Normally, this clamping value depends upon the design, but since this is an example, we have decided to clamp it to 1. Now comes the tricky part. What about the signals between the two power gated domains, this SIG3 and SIG4? Well, if you remember the first slide, there was one point. Logic inside Aon PGD wrapper can be power gated but will not be power gated when PGD wrapper is powered on. Thus SIG3 can never have unknown value when PGD wrapper is on but SIG4 can become unknown when PGD wrapper is power gated while Aon PGD wrapper is on. So we have to clamp SIG4 and here we have decided to clamp it to 0. Also as you can see each gated domain has a different isolation control. This is the isolation control for PD gated domain while this is the this is the isolation control for PD gated Aon domain. So it is done so that if one domain is power gated, the isolation cells related to that domain is clamped to its isolation value. Similarly, we need to implement level shifter strategies as the signals are crossing multiple voltage domains. Since signals SIG1 and SIG2 are from the same voltage domain of 0.9 volt, we don't need any level shifter for them. But for all other signals, we need level shifters. All the input signals to the 1.1 volt voltage domain needs a low to high level shifter, whereas the output signals from the 1.1 volt voltage domain needs a high to low level shifter as it has been shown here. Suppose we want to retain the value of register reg A before power is gated. Then we need to implement a reg uh, retention strategy as it has been shown here. If you are not sure about why we need to retain the value of a register, you can check my blog where I have described about the retention cells and why do we need it. So when a retention strategy is applied, a normal flop is converted into a retention flop by the synthesis tool. The retention flop is controlled by a signal in the power management unit to save its value before power getting or restore its save value after power is back on. In this diagram, this is that control signal that is going to the retention cells. Now comes the final part where we define the power state table. First we define the values or the states the supply ports can take on using the UPF command at port state. So VDDH and VDDL port can each have one value 1.1 volt and 0.9 volt respectively. But the output port of shutdown logic or the power gated switch can have two values. One is the corresponding supply voltage and the other is off. Then we create a power state table using the create PST command that defines the combination of states that can exist at the same time during operation of the design. And finally, using add PST state command, we define the state of each supply net for one possible state of the design. With this, we have learnt a very basic example of how to write an UPF for a given design. 